So in x86 there are instructions that allow you to control the flow of execution. One of these common instructions is the jump. So to use the jump instruction you have to specify an address. Jump address. And jumps jump comes in two versions. One is the conditional jump conditional jump and one is the unconditional jump and the unconditional jump is just a jump <laughs> so it's just the jump instruction so let's say you're at um, some address uh, here and then over here you have the jump instruction you want to jump to A and A is somewhere here then when the instruction pointer is at the here and when you execute the jump A instruction, the control flow will go from here to A. So control flow resumes at A. However, when you have the conditional jump, like say um, we have the uh, jump if equal, we're, we're going to jump to A if the values beforehand are equal. So let's say we are comparing two values E and F. Then if, if E and F are equal, we're going to A. Otherwise, if they're not equal, then we're going to execute code between um, here and A. So at B. So we're going to execute some code between here and A at B. So um, the jump, j jump if equal is also synonymous to jump if zero. So these two are the same, although these are two different. Um, instructions like in appearance they're actually the same functionality because the compare instruction what that does is just subtracts values so that when you have the same values here right if e and f are the same values then the difference is zero so that's why these two instructions are functionally equivalent so the next instruction is the that allows you to redirect control flow is the loop instruction so the loop instruction and like the jump instruction you're supposed to provide an address and to use this um, instruction uh, you have to also initialize CX with some value because what happens is that um, what happens is that it will decrement CX all the way until it will decrement CX so uh, let's say we're at some address here and then um, we're going to, and this is the body of our loop, and then we're going to loop here. So the first thing you want to do before you enter this loop body is to set CX to a value, let's say 5. If you don't set CX at all, you're going to have some undefined loop value, which is not good. So we're going to have to initialize CX with some value, let's say 5. Then it's going to go here and then and then code flows from top to bottom right so it goes uh, it executes this then it executes this then when it reaches this instruction right here it's going to now go back here and it will decrement CX now when it reaches here and CX equals 0 when it reaches here and CX equals 0 it's going to execute everything on the bottom of this instruction right here 